Hello and welcome to the Nostalgia Podcast for Nostalgia.com, a site dedicated to all things Australian TV, movies and music with a retrospective twist. I'm your host, Matt Fulton, and in this episode, we're talking Chinese. My order's simple, a shitload of dim sims. Ooh, that's a lot, even for a fat bastard like you. <sighs> and I want a bucket of soya sauce with that. OK, not exactly, but that was Detective Sergeant Barjas, voiced by comedian Tony Martin for The Late Show in 1993. But behind the beer-swigging, chain-smoking, donut-loving detective was a cop named Bluey, played by comedian and actor Lucky Grills. And this is what this episode is all about, the legacy of Lucky. Drunk walked into a shop and he said, excuse me, could I have a video of Spartacus, please? The bloke said, this is not a video shop, it's a fish and chip shop. He said, oh, all right. And he walked out, next night he come back in as full as a bird again. He said, could I have a video of the man from Snowy River? The bloke said, it's not a video shop, it's a fish and chip shop. He come back the next day, he said, I'll have 20 cents worth of chips. The bloke said, thank God for that. He's realised that this is a fish and chip shop. You want anything else? He said, yeah, a fish called Wanda. <laughs> While Lucky Grills is mainly known for his work as Bluey, or Barge Us, he has had an extensive career, appearing in other Australian TV shows and films and dedicating most of his time on the stand-up comedy circuit, releasing comedy albums as well. In the year 2000, he was awarded the Australian Centenary Medal for his services in the entertainment and arts industry, as well as an Order of Australian Medal the following year for his charity work. Grills passed away at 79 years of age on July 27, 2007 from natural causes, but only less than 24 hours beforehand he was still working on stage to the adoring public with no sign of health issues. Here at Nostalgia, we're celebrating his fine work 10 years on. And what a better way to do that is to chat to someone who was very close to him, his daughter, Shanra Grills. Hi, Shanra, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic. So, tell me who your father is. Uh, my father is Lucky Grills. He was a famous comedian and Australian actor. And do you have that background at all? No, sadly. I did um, do a bit of singing for a while and was, um, you know, in a few sort of, not productions, I would say, but quite a few things when I was in school, quite a few school shows and things like that. Um, did go on to do some um, a program through the Talent Development Project at um, the Entertainment Centre, which was, um, I was working with other people that were upcoming stars like Human Nature and stuff like that. But sadly, I sort of stopped it there and, and didn't, didn't take it any further after a while, so never went in that area. I, I wanted to, but just didn't happen that way. That was his job. He did it much better than I did, so yeah. I decided to do something else instead. And every time he appears on TV, you're like, hey, that's my dad. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and the same thing with the kids. Um, they, you know, they well, two of them um, knew him. One of them was around when he passed away, um, so he knows him a bit better than, than the other one. Um, but, yeah, they they know of him. They uh, Quite a few of their teachers know about him and ask questions and stuff. So a lot of their friends in class also know that, that their granddad was, you know, in the industry and quite famous, so that's quite exciting for them. How far back can you think of when your dad started his career in, uh, in the entertainment industry? Oh, gee. Um, well, obviously, I was... I hadn't been around um, for the whole part of it because he had started when he was in his 20s and I don't think I was born until he was in his 40s. Um, so he had been doing it for quite some time. Um, there's, I'm still learning about a lot of things nowadays, the things that he did, but he did start off, oh, gee, way back in there. He was born in 1928 and he started in his 20s. So it would have been in, in the 1940s that he started doing just stand-up comedy and bits and pieces, um, working with, with other people that were, you know, in the same industry looking to get a start. Um, I didn't really know a great deal about what he was doing and what he was, you know, all the types of things he did when he went to work until I got a bit older. Um, so I guess by the time I was about five or six, you know, and he was doing, um, you know, spots on certain TV shows and things like that. That's when I started to become a bit more familiar with what type of work he was doing then. So that's when I started to sort of see, you know, oh, he's on a country practice or he's on, um, 
you know, the Mike Walsh show or the midday show. So that's when it started to become a bit more real to me. Otherwise, it was just, oh, Dad's going to work and off he goes and yeah. he's going to tell a few jokes and, and that's about it. So it's um, one of those things where I was always learning as I got older as to just exactly what he did in the industry. And did he try his jokes on at all at anyone at home or...? Oh, definitely, yeah. There was. It wasn't really a matter of um, he did his job when he went to work and then came home and was a different person. He was always the same person. So no matter where you went or what you were doing, he was always telling jokes. Um, you know, he could be sitting at the dinner table and he would always find something appropriate to joke about, um, be drumming on things on the table. It used to drive my mother mad because he'd be you know, tapping on things. We'd be at a restaurant and he'd be playing the drums on everything on the table and telling jokes and just... You know, generally being himself, he really never, you know, wasn't a character as such. He was just always, always telling jokes and always having a laugh. Quite the larrikin. Quite he the was, larrikin. definitely. Now, as you've mentioned, uh, he's been on a country practice. He's had an extensive career in TV and he's also yeah. appeared on Home and Away and Chopper Squad and the big one that he's known for, and that's Bluey. Now, yes. were you around when he was on that show? I was. I was only very small then, um, so I think it was... I'm not sure what channel it was being played on at the time when I was a child, but I was only a small baby, like maybe toddler sort of age, um, and mum would put it on and I would watch it and I would actually get really upset because I couldn't... I was too young to understand, you know, what he was doing on the TV and I used to cry because I could see him, but I couldn't touch him or, <laughs> or get to him and, I'd, you know, I'd be crying and touching the TV and so mum stopped playing it for me for me after a while because I just didn't understand what was going on. Um, so that was when I was very, very young that he started Bluey. Did he tell you any stories of what was it like on the set and uh, any people that would come over from the set as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, he often used to tell us, you know, things about what had happened if something interesting had happened when he'd been, you know, on the set of a movie or something. Um, he used to have, we had a big billiard room underneath our house with a piano and an area where you could sit and play music and stuff. And he would often have entertainers come over um, and, you know, they would sit there and they would have like a jam, you know, one of them would be playing the piano, one would be playing, um, you know, a guitar or a banjo or something like that because Dad played a few instruments himself. Um, and they would sit there and they would play music and they would write as well because Dad also wrote um, music and wrote, you know, things um, for his skits and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, there, there were often people coming over. Um, oh, I couldn't tell you all the names of the different types of people who used <laughs> to come to our house, but uh, when he appeared on a country practice, I remember at one point we went to Sid Halen's house for a oh, barbecue. Cookie. Cookie, um, yeah, and then we had, there's a lady, uh, and she used to be on a, a margarine ad. Her name was Rita, the Eater, Eater, Rita, or the, something like that. Rita, the, uh, oh, the Eater. Uh, yeah, Eater. And she had red, red hair. Um, I know she was in the industry, I just can't remember exactly what she used to do. I think she used to sing, she used to do a bit of, um, a few different things. But I remember she came over to our house once, um, and we used to also have, it was an annual Boxing Day party that we had every year at our house and lots of different entertainers would come over then. We'd have about 100 people. Wow. That would be a party that would start at about 12 o'clock in the daytime and still be going at about midnight and there'd be many people coming and going throughout that time and, you know, you just faces that you'd seen on TV, you weren't sure who they were but you knew that you knew them. So it was always very exciting, always never a dull moment at our house. When he was home there was... Um, Definitely always someone interesting coming over. A so. party at Lucky's place. How about that? Yeah, there were times where he, because he used to work away, so he wasn't always home. Sometimes he'd be away four weeks out of six, um, and that would be, you know, ongoing for quite a few months. But then when he was home, um, definitely always having people over and doing something related to his work, writing music, um, you know, practising things downstairs. It was always something going on. Do you have any of his library in your collection? Uh, I have a few bits and pieces, not a great deal. I've got a couple of posters, um, magazine articles. I've got a copy of the autobiography that he wrote, um, his book. I have uh, many of his discs that he did his skits on. His um, He released quite a few um, CDs and things. And he used to sell those at the end of his shows with jokes on them and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I've got quite a few of those. I also have um, a couple of DVDs, not many. Um, I've got a, 
I've got a Late Show one, I've got a Bajas one, and then I've also got the last movie that he did, um, his last role before he passed away, uh, was a movie called Unearthed. Um, bit of a scary one. I have not actually been able to bring myself to watch it yet. <laughs> okay. Only because that, cause I know that was his last acting role, and I'm still, even though it's 10 years, I'm still funny. I still get really upset when I watch him on TV. Um, you know, I sit there and I smile and I laugh, but I get teary, you know, because yeah. I was quite close to my dad. So I have that movie and I intend on watching it one day. Um, but yeah, I just haven't done it yet. Oh, that's so bittersweet about it because you don't know how you might react to it. Because... Exactly. And it's, you know, things can pop up randomly. Like I was sitting here with my kids about two years ago and we were just watching TV one day and there was a kids show that he was on called um, Mortified and yep. he did a couple of episodes on it. It was a, an ABC show. Um, he did two episodes on it and that was probably about a year or two years before he passed away and um, I'd been telling the kids about it because they'd watched quite a few episodes. They, they used to watch this show all the time and I said, oh, you know, Poppy, because we used to call him Poppy Duda, um, I said, you know that he was on this show and they're like, no, he wasn't. And I said, no, he was. I said, you just have to wait till you see the episodes. And I tried looking them up online and, and couldn't remember which season or which episode they were, so didn't have much luck. Oh. And um, we were just sitting on the lounge one day watching it on a Saturday and, and on it came and it happened to be those two episodes. And <laughs> we're like, oh, my God, look. And it was really great to show um, my middle boys. I've got three boys. So the middle one who wasn't around when he passed away, he sat there going, is that my granddad? Oh, my gosh. Like, he was just fascinating. He, his dad on TV and he got really excited and quite emotional. Um, and it, the same thing happened in class once with my eldest. They were doing something and the teacher said, oh, we're just going to put on um, a movie or something just to fill in some time. A couple of episodes of this show mortified. And he didn't say anything knowing that that had been the show that, that his granddad was on. And wouldn't you, you know, know it? It was that particular episode. And he said, oh, that's my granddad. And everyone in the class was like, no, it's not. And the teacher said, well, actually, yes, it is. You know? so, wow. Yeah, it, it's fascinating just how it pops up every now and then. And, and you you know, you never forget because you're constantly reminded of of things that, that come around every now and then. You go, oh, there's Dad, you know. So well, imagine, um, imagine doing that now with uh, the release of Barjas. Yes. Now that it's also on iTunes, not just DVD or yeah. VHS, <laughs> what was that like when, um, how, how did you feel when the Degeneration or Working Dog uh, decided to redub Bluey and turn it, it into uh, the flatulent cop that he is it on the show? It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it, it really was. It was a lot of fun. I was in uh, my last couple of years in high school when um, he did it. So it was, you know, it was all the go and it, it was so popular with everyone. Everyone was talking about it and so many people were saying, oh, that's Shannon's dad, you know. Oh, yeah, we know, we know his daughter. And so it was quite, it sort of like, you know, revamped everything and, and even though he was still in the industry and still working and, and quite busy and everything, it really sort of, um, you know, brought a whole new light to Bluey, obviously, and um, just, that, yeah, it, it gave him like a different a different side of it all where, you know, he'd go out and they released um, T-shirts and all sorts of things, you know. And I remember one day I was just walking through one of the local shopping centres and I walked past someone wearing a bar draft shirt and I just laughed. Wow. I said, oh, God, like, we had our own shirts, but we never wore them <laughs> out in public. Um, we just wear them at home. But to walk past people and think, oh, God, they're wearing my dad's shirt or, you know, to go into the ABC shop and see the DVDs for sale, it was just, it was really nice. It was quite, um, it, it was funny and it was a bit of a chuckle for us all because, it was something that, you know, he thought it was hilarious, the fact that, you know, they'd rewritten it and made it this farting, burping policeman that, you know, was just, you know, hilarious. <laughs> the, so, the polar opposite of what a police officer should uh, be, yeah. Yeah, of what the actual show was about. So he, you know, and he took it so well. He he didn't, you know, he wasn't offended by it or anything. He thought it was fantastic. So it was, it was a really nice way to, you know, watch episodes of the show even though I hadn't seen that many of Bluey, um, it was a really fun way to watch them and, and see just how funny. You know, I still watch them to this day and I just, like, you can't help but laugh. So, yeah, it was very interesting at the time and, and um, 
definitely got a lot of questions about it and a lot of, you know, a lot of my teachers were watching it and, and stuff and so it was it was good fun. Well, it kind of uh, created a new fan base for him too because of the new generation uh, such as it'll be, it would have been a the younger Gen X and the early stage of Gen Y, uh, which I am myself part of that Gen Y, yep. uh, where um, because of Barjas, it's, I even asked my father um, who... Um, when The Late Show would be showing Barjas, and I'm saying, well, what is this show? And he said, oh, it was Bluey. Uh, yeah, it was known as Bluey back in the day uh, in the 70s. It would be shown on Channel 7. And mm. it was exactly not what that was. And no. Because, right. yeah, uh, beer um, swigging, cigarette smoking, and it was uh, totally opposite to what he what, what police should be. And, yeah. But it just added an extra character of, um, you know, eating donuts and, you know, making it, you know, the whole Tony Martin giving him that extra character of life. Yeah, uh, that's right. And because of that, to me, it opened up that whole new fan base because I even remember when he was appearing on Hey Hey at Saturday and mm. when they had that comedy segment where uh, they had three comedians and they'll say a topic and they'll make a joke, a punchline out of it. And I remember him wearing a T-shirt with barge ass on barge the front of it. Barge ass on it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He lapped I it up. That. Yeah, definitely. No, it was. It was. It was really good for him too, and it was good for his career. Even though, as I said, he was still working very much at the time, and still, you know, very, very much into telling jokes and doing his stand-up comedy and everything. He was more known to the older, um, you know, the older audience, people like your parents, um, like you said, and stuff. So the younger kids really didn't know of him. If you said, "Oh, do you know Lucky Girl?" They'd go, "Oh, who's that?" You know. Um, so I guess by doing this, it, it did give him a whole new fan base and it, it gave him a whole new heap of people that you know, only knew him for that character. So it, it was it was great for him. It really did, um, you know, give him a bit of fun and, and you know, it, it, it brought back the show, even though it hadn't been watched for many years. It, it brought it back in a different light. So it was very entertaining. Yeah, and so he continued working all the way up to his uh, unfortunate passing. Uh, and that yes. was uh, 2007, I gather. Yeah. yeah, it was 10 years ago this year. And it was two weeks before the DVD release of Barge Yes. You, was he actually aware of the DVD release coming out? Yes, he was. He was actually quite excited about it. Um, he had a few different little projects going at the time um, that he passed away. He was doing a few different things, and, and I remember him telling me about that and saying, oh, that's coming out next week. You know, when it comes out, I'll have to send you a copy. And, you know, I was all excited about it in, in amongst all the other things that he was doing. So it was definitely um, something that he was looking forward to, that coming out. Now, you're aware that Bluey, the entire box set, is available on DVD now through Crawford's? Yes, I have heard it. I don't actually have it myself, but um, I, I had heard that it had been released. So, yes, it's something that I'll definitely look into purchasing to add to my collection. And what do you think the legacy that your father has left behind? Oh, so many things. He has definitely left behind, you know, many happy people for the years and years of, of jokes and, and funny things and, um, you know, Basically, just his character and the type of person that he was. He always knew how to make someone laugh. Um, he had such a huge fan base, whether it be from his joke telling or his TV shows or barjas. He, you know, you could never go anywhere with him without someone recognising him and without him having to stop and sign an autograph. And you know, it was always definitely, um, you know, very exciting to go out with him, even if it was just to a restaurant or something like that, because. You, you know, you could never go anywhere without people whispering and pointing and saying, "Oh, is that you know, such and such that lucky grill?" So mm. it was it was always fun to go out with him because I was pr really proud of him. I, I've, I'll always be really proud of him and, and everything that he did. And um, you know, it was quite exciting to go out with him and, and have people recognise him for who he was. And he used to love that too. Yeah, well, you must be a really proud daughter. I am very, yeah, and, you know, still, obviously, I don't think my boys will ever really understand just how much of an impact he had on, on Australian comedy and stuff. Um, obviously, that's something that I have to teach them and, and show them and stuff, but, you know, it's it's still exciting for them and exciting to know that they had a, a famous grandfather, so that's something that, you know, we all get to, you know, learn and teach them, um, you know, by the things I can show them and the memorabilia that I have and that it's um, one of those things. It's an ongoing process. There's so many things 
that I can be telling them all the time, oh, did you know he did this and did you know he did that? And, you know, it's it's even, it's still a learning process for me because I can still, you know, to this day, see things that come up and go, oh, I never knew he did that. I never knew he was in that. And there's, I haven't watched everything that he was in, every film or everything that he did on TV. There's so many things that, you know, there's probably a whole list of things that I still haven't seen. So it's, um, it's always fun to look at things and, and see just what a varied career he had in that industry. Well, on behalf of all the fans out there, thank you for letting your dad entertain us and leaving a lasting memory, especially the odd fart joke too. Yeah, definitely. You're very welcome. And I know he would be he would be very proud to um you know, to know that there's so many people out there that appreciated him for what he did and what he loved doing. It was it was more of um something fun to him rather than a job. It was something that put a smile on his face every day and that's why he did it so long. Thank you so much, Shannon Grills, for having a chat and sharing the love that we all have for Lucky. Meanwhile, Barjas is available on DVD at all good retailers and also iTunes. Plus, the entire Bluey series is available on DVD only through crawfordsdvd.com.au. None of these mentions are actually paid promotions, but I wouldn't say no to a freebie, so <clears throat> uh, cough up. Anyway, thank you for downloading and listening to this podcast. I uh, really appreciate it. Feel free to send me some feedback if you shoot me an email, ozstalgia at gmail.com, or check the account out on Twitter and on Facebook. Feel free to give us a bit of a like, but make sure you stay subscribed to the podcast because there'll be more interviews down the track. We've got a few lined up, and make sure you visit nostalgia.com. Appreciate it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next podcast. Ciao. Audio credits. The Late Show presents Barge Arse by Working Dog Productions. Voiced by Tony Martin. Lucky Grills telling fish and movie jokes. From Hey Hey It's Saturday 1994. Summer's Carol Productions.